All right. So I have posted my non-destructive overlay layer, which is required. I just set my overlay layers to normal, saved it as a JPEG with a different name, posted that. I've posted my finished creature scape. So those are the two requirements to meet the middle part of the rubric. I've also, I'll add required to it because you need all of these components for the proving ground. It's all very particular. So required I've listed my physical dimensions, right? This is going to confuse you though, because you don't need to match my physical dimensions. You just need to say what is yours. So this is required uh, dimensions. resolution and resolution type. So physical required physical dimensions minus 17 inches wide by 14 inches tall. How did I get that? After I cropped it, use the crop tool so I don't have any leftover space around it. Like let's say I just crop it a little bit smaller right there because I don't like that little lip of rock. Okay, now my dimensions will be slightly different, right? Now, how do I see what those physical dimensions are and that resolution? I go to image, image size. This is true in Photoshop or Photo P. Make sure it says inches, not pixels, right? Or anything else. So mine is now 16.929 inches wide by 14.451 pixels or inches tall at 350 pixels per inch. If I wanted to be really exact, I'm going to uncheck resample and I'm going to put in 300 because this is actually 300 is the standard minimum print resolution. That's professional standard. 350 is higher. And my image was already larger than 8 by 10 at 350. So I knew it would also be larger than 8 by 10 at 300. But this is actually the size I could print this in the real world. So it's basically, I'll just say 20 by 17 inches. And you always do the width first. So I'll say 20 by 17 inches. Same number of pixels as before, but this is at 300 pixels per inch. And what's good to know about that is that this is standard minimum print resolution. That is what you need to be able to identify, whether it's for screen or for print. If it wasn't 8 by 10 or larger, then I would have to change this by unchecking resample and clicking 72 because that is standard minimum screen resolution. So I can show it on a screen up to 82 inches by 70 inches. But you only need to label one. And the only reason you would do something other than print resolution is if you don't meet the physical dimensions of 8 by 10 or larger at 300 pixels per inch. It's very important in this step not to have resample checked because resample will change your number of pixels. It will lessen your quality, right? It will either grow, make up pixels, or it will take them away. You don't want to do either. You just want to see what pixels you have and what you can do with them. All right. Here's the other thing I wanted to show at this point as we're finishing up and we're saving. I could also turn off my creature layers and I might like this landscape more than what I turned in for assignment one because it has texture fills, it has non-destructive dodge and burn, which we didn't use on assignment one. I moved some of the elements around and kind of simplified it because that helped. And I actually do like this version of it better, like less of it's covered up. 
So what can I do? I can say file, save a copy to the desktop, and I can make this my resubmission for assignment one. And why might I want to do that? As a JPEG, well, maybe I only got two out of three points on assignment one. And there are just certain things that, that made it less engaging and could be worked on. And I feel like this addresses that. So then I can go to assignments in the course. Go back to where I posted my assignment one. And I can add a resubmission. And remember, as long as you met the initial deadline, you can resubmit for a new grade at any time until the end of the semester. So I've got a lot here, but I'm going to edit it. I've got required stuff. I've got optional stuff. But I am not going to delete any of this. Instead, I'm going to add to it and say resubmission. And it was improved after proving ground number one. Because we interrogated the landscape more. Then I can go to my desktop, grab it, drop it in. And because I'm not deleting my original submission, when I, the instructor, see your work, I want to see the improvements that you made. So let me see if there are any improvements here. This was my original foreground, middle ground, background, but it's very foreground heavy. And now it's a little bit more muted, right? Foreground, we get a, to see a lot more of that middle ground as it winds back. And so if the critique on this was the transitions between foreground, middle ground, and background were a little too harsh and could be, you could use texture overlays, for instance, to, to help them transition more smoothly. Then this answers that question very well, or this improves it. And then you can get a new score. The next thing I would have to do, though, is I'd have to use my inbox tool and send the instructor a message that says, I resubmitted assignment one. And then I'll look for it and I'll send you a, a response in your inbox once I've rescored it, right? Because there's nothing in Canvas that will tell me you did that. So you've got to send me an inbox message once you've done it. Now, if I go back to the project, maybe I turn off everything except my creature layers. And that might be a lot of layers, but let's just do it and see. All these different composites, right? Way more than five. And now I've got a creature nicely cut out with additional shading on it. And I might think that this is an improvement on my assignment too. It might be better cut out. It might be more blended, more believable. Maybe the color balance is better. So I can then say a file, save as a, save a copy to the desktop, and this is going to be Carl Assignment 2 resubmission. Very important to rename it so you're not overwriting your proving ground. I'm going to save it not as a JPEG, but as a PNG, so that it supports that transparency. And then I go to Canvas, and I go to the home page, and I go to Assignments, and I navigate to Assignment 2, where you post, and I find my creature submission way down here on the second page. Right, there was my final submission. 
and maybe I maybe I got a two out of three on this, maybe I got a one out of three, maybe I got a three out of three, but I still think that this is better, and I'm trying to make the best portfolio for printing for the midterm. So I say edit, and I don't erase the earlier one. Instead, I add to it, and I say resubmission. And just to remind you, this is a great time to do it, because in order to do proving ground number one, we improve both the landscape and the creature. Hello. So what we can do is now take that off of the desktop where I saved it, this PNG, drop it in. Shrink it down a little bit. And then send a message to the instructor with the course inbox that you have resubmitted it and want it to be considered for a new score. Now this is pretty darn subtle, but I can see already that there's a little bit of difference in the pose. This looks less awkward, right? He feels a little bit more steady on his feet. That's because I use Puppet Warp to make it fit into that environment. And the lighting is a little bit warmer, especially on the feathers, on the shoulders, on the wings, and all of that just works a little bit better. So we get better at digital art by using it, by practicing it. And so this is a good opportunity for you to take your elements from Proving Ground 1 once you're finished with it and happy with it, and actually get better points on your Assignment 1 and Assignment 2. All right. Now, the final part of the Proving Ground, which students don't usually have a problem with because it's creative. And we like creative opportunities in our classes is once you've posted the image and your overlay layers, right? And you've posted your physical dimensions, your resolution and resolution type. The next requirement is the last part of the rubric. And that last part of the rubric is right here. Frame novel problems in familiar terms. Did you explain how your creature is intended to interact with its environment in your post, accounting for atmospheric and practical concerns? For example, how does your creature breathe, shelter, and eat in this environment? So to do that, I just have to write a narrative underneath. Like we've been saying, if this was a role-playing game, this would be the, the free form part of your character sheet where you just get to write about its backstory, about how, how your creature survives. So this is where I can name my creature. And I named it something back in assignment two. What did I call it? A beaked gerbil. So I'm just gonna write the beaked gerbil is a scavenger in the uh, moisture rich environment of what do I want to call this landscape of the lollipop desert or I'll call it the Highlands. So I'm making stuff up, but it's getting me to pay attention, to frame novel situations, novel concepts in familiar terms. How do I make sense of these connections? So the beak gerbil is a scavenger in the moisture-rich environment of the lollipop Highlands. It survives on the sugary crust that forms after, or I'll say,